Hello everyone, this is Nitpicky Nerd and this is my review of the third episode of season 3 of the Orville called Mortality Paradox. I didn't like most of this episode, I think only the ending kind of redeemed it a little bit, otherwise I would probably say it's my least favorite episode of the Orville. First of all, as often is with the show, they kind of recycle the same ideas that we saw in the older Star Trek shows, which the ideas themselves are ones I loved. You know, my favorite kinds of TNG episodes were the ones with some kind of mystery in the beginning in which you don't know what's going on, kind of like Twilight Zone situations, and they have to figure out what's happening. And so this episode of the Orville was kind of like that and uh, it really feels like they kind of took the ideas of different kinds of TNG episodes and just mixed them together. And I don't necessarily mind them remaking the same kind of ideas as long as they make them better than they were done before. And unfortunately in this case it's not done better, it's done worse. It feels cheaper even though the special effects in some places are better simply because technology nowadays is better and so they can afford to do all kinds of giant monsters and creatures and space battles better than they could be done before but in other ways it just feels worse. Like even the sets and specifically if you compare Picard from TNG to Mercer in the Orville it just doesn't feel authentic here. Here it's like an imitation of someone trying to do kind of Picard scenes but failing at it unfortunately and I love Seth MacFarlane for creating the show but as an actor maybe he should have put himself as one of the more minor characters and put a better actor as the lead of the show. That's my honest opinion. After seeing numerous scenes of Mercer trying to be like TNG Picard but being so much worse that uh, that's my honest opinion. And so this episode felt like a mix of all kinds of scenes we saw in TNG all mashed together into this new version and it was still much worse than it was done before and so that was disappointing. So I kind of hated most of this episode. I think I could have ranked it as the worst Orville episode if not for the ending which kind of redeemed it because I did kind of like the ending which also didn't really feel that original because it was also the same kind of idea that we saw in TNG, basically they made their own version of a Q-like entity, which also existed back in TOS, you know, there was a Trelane and there was that Metron who appeared to Kirk after the Gorn fight, uh, who revealed it was all basically kind of a test of humanity by a more advanced species who watches over them and stuff like that. So the Orville made their own version of that kind of idea and that was actually done well and maybe in some ways even better because they also had a kind of a personal relationship with the crew of the Orville, so that kind of explains something which was never really explained uh, in TNG, for example, why the Q had specific interest in humanity and Picard specifically, like there was no real reason for why it should be them specifically that the Q will always toy with. And so I like the fact that the Orville kind of tied things together to their own previous uh, episodes, namely that uh, planet which experienced faster time in which their civilization progressed much faster, they are the same ones who appear now as a much more advanced species of immortals and they have a specific interest in the Orville crew because they interacted with them in the past with their own origins, their own civilization. And also visually I kind of like the look of that alien, kind of reminds me of the throne costume. And also the first time I saw her when I saw those little uh, dots flying all over her suit, and she started telling them about how they encountered the Orville crew before. For a moment I thought they were going to tie it with those uh, two-dimensional aliens, which uh, also had those kind of glowing dots flying all over the place, and so I was hoping that will not be the case, because that would be kind of stupid. How would two-dimensional aliens evolve into humanoids, or are they just pretending to be a humanoid and to interact with them? That probably would have been a little bit too much and not really that realistic, so I am glad that they went with the idea that these are the offspring of those same people, from the planet in which time was moving faster, who the Orville crew interacted with and accidentally started the religion there and all of that and that will explain why these people are interested in these specific people who interacted with their own civilization in the far past from their point of view and also it will explain why these advanced uh, aliens didn't really exist before, they only came into the existence from the point of view of the rest of the galaxy, only now they became that advanced. And maybe in their next appearance they will be even more advanced, they will be literally like the Q, the most advanced beings in the galaxy, because for them a lot of time passed, and so technically they should be the most advanced species in the whole Orville universe. And also by establishing that they are immortal we can have a reappearance of the same actress who played this entity in this episode, she can be the same one in all the next ones, since she is immortal so she doesn't age, she can be the same actress without any problem since she's immortal, so even if for her millions of years will pass, 
she will still be the same character and maybe she will be more like a villain maybe by being so bored these aliens will play more tricks on the crew so which is kind of like what happened in this episode they were kind of wanting to experience uh, things from the eyes of humans because they are all immortal they're all bored basically they forgot what it's like to be mortals and so that's why they'll play all these games which brings me back to the unoriginality of the first half of the episode which really felt like a mix of all kinds of TNG episodes like uh, the Royale when the away team got stuck in what looked like a casino from the 20th century and they couldn't get out of it there are really similar scenes I remember Worf trying to shoot his way out of that building and couldn't and here we have Kelly trying to blast their way out and cannot and all the times they walk through a door and appear in a different place, in a different scenario, that reminded me of that episode when Nagilon was testing the crew to see what they will do in different situations and they were walking through doors and appearing in different places and so the same kind of thing happens here. So it's basically rats in a maze being tested by a, a more superior alien who is immortal and wants to learn about death and all of that and so we have really similar things here, only it's done worse here I think, even visually. All the sets, all the editing, all the transitions, it wasn't as well done as it was done in TNG, unfortunately. Except maybe a few places in which some giant CGI monster will show up, like first some kind of giant orc and later a sea monster, Cthulhu with tentacles, and so visually maybe those places are better, but overall it felt cheaper, it felt worse than it was done in TNG, because in TNG they always did it in a creative way, in an interesting and funny way, and also speaking of being funny, the Orville kind of stopped uh, doing humor almost completely, like there are very few laughs, there are very few jokes in the show anymore, and I think that's a mistake, I much preferred the first season of the Orville in which they were uh, more funny and more enjoyable overall, even though some of the jokes were kind of silly, it didn't always land, but overall it... Uh, just felt better and also humor is a way to excuse away some of the silliness when you have all kinds of silly situations humor makes it easier to accept it all and to enjoy it all but here it's all played completely straight as if this is a totally real situation and with very little humor and jokes throughout and so it made it all feel kind of dry and boring and unoriginal on top of it and so it felt like a mix of different episodes and also there's that uh, kind of a, an attempt of a surprise because at some point they think they escaped the simulation and went back into the ship and then it's revealed what's happening on the ship is also a simulation which I personally predicted right from the start when they found that uh, device in the cave I thought oh how convenient that uh, why would it be open for them to access in the cave if it can do all these uh, amazing things and create this totally realistic simulation for them and yet they can find the device inside the cave and shut it off and then they think they came back into the Orville and then later it's revealed it's uh, still inside the simulation. We had the same kind of twist uh, back in Star Trek TNG when they went into a holodeck and thought they went out and they're in the normal ship and later it's revealed they're still stuck in a holodeck, that it was a holodeck inside the holodeck. And so the same kind of twist uh, which was done uh, a lot of times in different science fiction shows is done here so for the new generation of fans who didn't see all the previous shows maybe for them it will be fine but for me personally I could see all the surprises coming right away so it wasn't surprising to me so for me it felt kind of boring and not so fresh and also it annoyed me that it was done worse than it was done before I think even the episode The Royale at least it was kind of a period piece it was taking place in a more distant past because it was like a parody of the 50s or something with uh, gangsters and all that kind of stuff so it wasn't just set in today's time which is what the Orville is often doing whenever they have these situations of going to alien planets or in this case into this simulation it's like today so it's immediately less interesting and it feels cheaper like filming it somewhere today instead of making it a period piece because you know when you have a whole period of history to pick from why would it be always from today so that also annoyed me a little bit and also if this was some kind of test to the aliens to see the characters reactions why would they put them in a situation when they would be totally clueless especially the airplane scene when they suddenly are on an airplane which is about to crash and they go into the cockpit and see there are no pilots and they get scared and they start to pilot the plane on their own why would the aliens put them in a situation of a 21st century airplane at all why not put them into something that they would recognize from their own period and then put them in danger. The reason is because it's cheaper to film that way and so that annoys me because why would they even know how to pilot a plane from the 20th century? Why wouldn't they think there's an autopilot like would be in their own time period so why would they be so scared of an airplane and how would they know how to pilot it right away and so little things like that really annoyed me that uh, everything in the show 
is a modern settings of today, which feels cheaper and less interesting because making it a period piece of setting it in a more distant past would be much more interesting. And the reason for all of this is so that the characters will experience fear, so that the aliens can experience it from their eyes because the aliens themselves forgot what it's like. So that kind of reminds me of that Voyager episode when we saw the Q continuum. The, all the Q are extremely bored because they've seen everything and done everything so many times that they don't care about anything anymore. So that kind of explains why the Q we knew from TNG was always so keen on uh, playing games and uh, basically trying to amuse himself because he's so bored, because he lived for so long. And so I kind of like that idea. So I don't mind them making kind of their own version of a Q-like entity. And also it was similar to different kinds of TNG episode with the more advanced alien uh, playing games, like in that episode when Picard was replaced by an alien, while the real Picard was stuck in a jail trying to escape with different aliens from different planets. All because these more advanced aliens wanted to study them basically. So here it feels like a combination of all of those ideas put together and I kind of like that ending and also I love the later when they simply discuss uh, some of these philosophical ideas of what it would be like to be immortal, would you want to be immortal or not, what is death, uh, what it's like to be dead, all those kinds of ideas which also I remember some scenes from TNG in which they discuss those questions as well. I like those kinds of scenes because they raise very interesting existential philosophical questions which don't really have any answer but it's fun to debate them and discuss them. So I even like that scene in the end when the crew simply discuss all of this in a calm way while sitting at the table and I love those kinds of scenes from TNG much more than all the best action and amazing special effects in the new Star Trek shows. I much prefer those simpler philosophical scenes because those kinds of questions which they raise in those scenes are the most fascinating stuff ever, like it's the existential philosophical question. And so that's why I did like the ending of this episode and I love these new aliens which they introduced and I love the fact that they're tying it to previous episodes. And technically they should be like gods at this point, so shouldn't they be able to save them from the Kalons and stuff like that. Maybe they won't do it because they have their own version of the Prime Directive now, maybe because of what happened with their own history when they believed in gods interfering in their society which caused a negative effect. Maybe it can be used to explain why they won't be saving the Union from the Kalons and stuff like that because they don't want to interfere in the affairs of the lower life forms and stuff like that. So I think that's a fascinating idea to play with, so I hope We'll see more appearance by these aliens in the future, if done right. So I thought all of this ending saved the episode from being terrible, because I kind of hated the beginning when they get stuck inside uh, this high school and cannot leave. And there is no real game that they should pass or do. They just uh, are forced into these situations in which they are put in danger and get scared and that's it. There is no game they have to win by doing something. There is no point to any decision they make. They don't make any decisions of what to do in any situation. They just uh, go from place to place and they're being put in danger and the aliens experience it from their eyes apparently. And so it also reminds me of that uh, TOS episode, The Cage, the original Star Trek episode, the Telosians who wanted to probe the minds of the humans for their own amusement, which was also similar to what the Orville did early on with those red aliens with big heads who put everyone in a zoo. That's why I have some mixed feelings about the Orville, because on the one hand they are obviously recycling many of the ideas from the old Star Trek shows, but those ideas are ones I love and so I wouldn't mind seeing a new version of them as long as they do it in a better way. So if they improve it in some way, either visually or acting wise or with new kind of twists, or with humor, if they make kind of a parody of it, they do the same kind of setups but do it in a funnier way then it can be worth it, but if they just do an imitation of it and it's a lesser imitation, if it's done worse than it was done before, then it only serves to annoy me and that's kind of what happened in the first half of this episode because it reminded me of existing episodes which were done better decades ago than it was done here and that's why it annoyed me a lot and so that's my opinion, let me know what you think and we can discuss all of this in the comments below. Check out all the links in my description box. I will be doing compilations of all the stuff I was talking about here. I will be demonstrating it with back-to-back -back comparison videos on my other channel. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.